on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chingo Chats. Keep your politics at the door. Uh, man, off the top of my head, man, shout out to uh, Andrew Schultz and his lovely bride, newlyweds. When yep. they get married? They got married like the other day. Oh, nice. Congratulations yeah. to mm. Schultz. Yes, sir. here. Felicidades. He said, gracias, carajo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My boy speaks Spanish. Um, yeah, man. So, uh, Chingo Chats, we just recorded RPT. Make sure y'all go listen to that. There is a lot going on. Yeah, that was... A lot of info in that episode. There's, there's a lot going on. And um, that's partially why, you know, it's the holidays and holiday shopping. I went and got my wife some uh, a firearm and some ammo. I'm going to get her a couple other things, you know, some some girly stuff and shit. But, you know, got her little, you know, I'm talking about little baby Glock cock, 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 with a holster. Um, I like how you landed from Cali, went straight to the range. You're like, I need to be, I need to be more American again. More tips. Well, I, we had it up. Uh, me and my brother-in-law had been trying to get it in. And uh, it was a nice little bonding moment. We got to ha hang out and I got to just have a life and do an activity outside of like hustle and bustle and juggling and traveling and playing promoter and, and being a comedian, being on stage and making content. It's like, oh, my God, 20 years of just trying to chase your tail around of like, you got to stay relevant. You need to build momentum and and just so much adversity of like you're always all are blocked. They're always cock blocking you. You're always shadow banned. Um, but it was fun, bro. I, boy, we lit that target up. We did lit, you bring it with you? Can I, you did they let you bring it? Uh, I took them. Oh, okay. I, I brought, we, we hit two of them. Uh, we did two. But uh, I need to aim for body mass. When I go for headshots, that's where it gets a little sloppy. I, I might hear you hit your earlobe. I can't wait to get you on like Call of Duty or something just to get you like, you know, to play the game so you can feel like you're fucking in it. Uh huh. Um, I need you to. If you can, Rob. Yeah. Um, everybody listening, Rob also produces my wife's podcast. It's called Her Lounge Podcast. I need you to put a bug in her ear. See, I already, I already got a lot going in terms of cool shit. Like, she already got me a guitar. Mm -hmm. I've been slacking on that. Um, you know, she lets me go to jujitsu. I'm not a mandilon, but she lets me go to jujitsu Tuesday night. She always makes an effort to, like, carve, help me carve out that time for me. Um, so I feel like I'm being greedy if I'm also like, and I want a consult. I already did. I put that. She was totally for it. What? Yeah. She, the fuck up, she even said that whenever y'all go out that way, like my way, uh, that like one of the, one of the main things that she wants to make sure that we work towards is getting that like studio space so we can make the different sets so that we just have, you know, the Chingo Chat RPT set and her set and the merch set, and then in there is where you can play the guitars and add the games and all that. We need to play. We need to. We need to plant some propaganda, <laughs> like like I like. Come it. up with a bunch of fake news that shows all the benefits of video games. Just be like, man, his thing gonna get bigger. Like he he just gonna stay hard. Oh, that's it, facts. It's like that's Viagra. Not, that's facts. Like just like he, he he his tongue ain't gonna get tired. Like just hit her with some fake science. I, I want no you to more. cherry pick some data. I want you to play. Uh, uh, I want you to be like Fauci and Francis Collins and, and just get some propaganda, maybe get a source at the local news and write up a fake story about how playing video games when you're 42. Boost your testosterone? Yes, when you're 42 and you play video games, it just it works wonders for your health. Yeah, it's the dopamine that hits, and then it goes from the head to the other head, and then pow, boom. And just be, like, just be like, you don't want him in that metaverse strip club, do you? This is how you keep him out of there. That's true. You put him on the battlefield, you know, pretend like he's a sheepdog. So then when he does go do the sheepdog response class in Austin with Tim Kennedy, he's kind of like aware of like some of that lingo and some of mm -hmm. the like moves. And that's the goal. The goal is to get real sheepdog with it, like to where I can. So by the time I meet Tim Kennedy, he could be like, oh, you a, you a fellow sheepdog. And that way he could be like, check this out, class. <clears throat> check this out, class. Everybody, uh, a chingo. Come up here real quick. Can you show them? Real fast, how you would escape these handcuffs, hop out the trunk, shoot out the um, shoot out the other, the car, and then escape, and then hop out, and then send the German Shepherd, and then throw the grenade, and then do some hand to hand jujitsu combat. Yeah, he's a pretty intimidating guy. He's very friendly, very nice, Tim. But uh, he's built he's built like Rogan, right? You've he's, met him? Yeah, yeah, I met him at On It during oh, one of the jujitsu tournaments. He's a uh, he's a massive man. I mean, he's huge. He's just kind of like very ogre like, very friendly, but he's got a lot of energy, right? So he's like. Super energetic. Uh, he just he just looks like he could just what well, he can. He can kill you with his hands, right? Yeah, but it's yeah. just it's one of those things where you're like, holy shit! Like you're big, you're very fast. Like even when he's just kind of moving, talking to you, whatever. It's like always very like high energy, and it's just like mm -hmm. dude's a motherfucker. But he's very cool. 
Yeah, so so that's the goal, man. It's just so by the time I meet Jocko Willink, mm. he could be like, oh, okay, bet. So w- w- what was you, bro? You was Army Ranger? What was you? And I'd be like, nah, man, you know, I'm civilian. I'm civilian, cuz. And he'd be like, no shit, bro, you want to seal? You ain't do the buds program? You sure you ain't a marksman? I did the stage buds. Yeah. What's that? Comedy? Yeah, stage buds. That's my buds. So, hey, I'm 42. You know, I'm getting to a late start. But by the time I'm 52, hey, I'm going to be a force to re-reckon with. Dude, by the time you're 52, man, who yeah, knows? That's old as fuck. What kind of, it is old as fuck. But that's, I mean, that's, that's Callan and Rogan That's fucked age. up. Yeah, no, that's my sister's age. That's fucked up. She's 52? Uh, well, Pat, my sister Pat, 10 years older than that's me. That's right. Uh, yeah, I mean, at that point, you're, who knows what kind of a American-built empire you're going to have by 52, you know? I just want Onnit to sponsor what we're doing over here. I mean, damn, what's that's the least, right? Can we at least get some supplements? Can I get some <laughs> Shroom Tech Immune? Onnit, is it too much to ask? Uh, Black Rifle, send us some, co- some more coffee. They did already. I appreciate it. But real talk, man, for next year, we got to have some sponsors. Um, You know, I'm not trying to tour as much. I want to... I wanna, Hunker down, double down, keep, you know, keep podcasting, um, you know, from time to time, maybe go out there, do some. Let's talk about that real quick. I watched your set from the Ha Comedy Festival, so I wanted to dive into that. I uh, want you I to am tell my me. I am worst critic. I, I know you are, and I want you to give me your honest opinion of what you saw. You saw it, right? Yeah, I need to watch it again, though. <clears throat> okay, from your initial one, what did you think? Placement, okay. set, performance, the okay. whole thing? So we did two takes <clears throat> that day in San Antonio. And everybody, including the, the director, creator, everybody was like, bro, first take, that's it. We using the first take. The first show, you're done. Second show, have fun. Let loose. Try some other things, you, you, you know, whatever. But we're using the first take. So they told you, right, that Pretty much, they're like, did the second we're one. using the first take. Huh. And then guess what? I'm watching, I'm like, either they're using a lot of clips from the second take, or this is all the second take. Of course, you know, I'm paranoid. I'm like, man, they sabotaging me. <laughs> but, um, but I know for a fact a lot of those clips were from the second take because Mighty Soul was filming the second show. <clears throat> so when it cuts to her, like her, she's in the audience, you see her green cell phone case and she's filming. It's like, that's the second take. And, um, and then I got audio recordings of both takes and I'll go, maybe go back and compare. But anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. That's why you got to kill it all the time. Yeah. Um, so that joke in particular, it just, or my performance, it just feels like, okay, it has a little bit of a slow start. And once you get to the part where there's the conflict, then it kind of, it revs up, but you got to hang in there. And, and so, you know, I got to watch it again, but I was like, yeah, okay. People, people telling me they like it, but, or they're like, man, we like your part, Steve's part, like y'all's parts with a bit, you know, whatever. Or, or man, you got a lot of laughs compared to some people. And I'm like, I'm not trying to compete with folks like that. Um, I honestly haven't even watched. I haven't watched Ralph's part. Ralph Bob. Bo- That's Ralph. the only one I saw. Ralph and yours. I haven't seen Ralph's part. Oh, you haven't funny. seen Steve's part? No. You got to watch Steve. Um. Anyway, I got to just sit down and watch the entire show. It's up now, HBO Max. Go check it out. And here are a couple of takeaways. Here are the main takeaways, Rob. The main takeaways are this. When you're trying to be in shape and you want to have like a certain body fat level or certain, you just want to like have a certain system or like the amount of exercise and diet and, you know, we got the meal plan popping. You got to stay ready because you never know when HBO is going to call and and when when, when, when the opportunity comes. Now you're on stage. And so I'm looking at myself on stage and I'm like, Yeah, I remember saying it is what it is. I hadn't dropped the extra little 10, 15 I wanted to drop by then, but it is what it is. Just focus on the funny and you'll get them next time, champ. So that's one of the big takeaways, which is you got to stay ready. If you want to, it's it's like Dana Lynn. Dana Lynn Bailey says, "When when it's time to do a photo shoot, I can't say, hey, give me six weeks real quick. Let me tighten up. The bitch is always tight. So facts. So that's the moral, which is like, pretend Netflix is calling tomorrow. And this is to anybody that's out there listening. Not everybody is in show business. Not everybody has to be on stage under the lights. But sometimes you have a high school reunion. Sometimes you have your friend's wedding. Sometimes there's a vacation. Sometimes it's like that beach trip. Um, You know, sometimes you might have to take photos with your family. Whatever, Whatever the case may be. 
that that's really one of the biggest takeaways. Like, bro, stay ready. Uh, that's number one. Number two is really tighten up your stand up skills so that you know how to adapt in a situation where it's like, huh, this isn't my crowd. This, I'm not used to this. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, how was the sound? Because I it felt like the echo might have thrown off a couple of people. Um, if you haven't report, I guess performed in a big space like that. Honestly, I don't think echo. No, was, nah, echo's not an issue because you have monitors. If anything, maybe your your timing. I mean, it's just not very intimate. Mm-hmm. You're in this big theater, and only a percentage of them know who you are. In all honesty, yeah, a, a lot of them you have no idea who invited them, how they heard about it, who they're there to see. So the moral of the story is, is you just got to have your skills set to where you could put me anywhere, like a Navy SEAL type shit. Like yeah. you could drop me anywhere and I can make people laugh for an hour. Like for example, when I did the corporate event, you have to make that adjustment. It's like some of these jokes ain't going to hit. They're not going to land the way you're used to them landing when you feel comfortable cussing and yeah. being nasty. Cause it's like, bro, they're having steak dinner. They're <laughs> in their Sundays, but they're wearing like suits and formal, their formal attire. They're with their coworkers, their bosses there. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like how much humping of the stool can I can get away with? That's why, you know, if you've never, there's been a lot of people that send me messages that it's their first time when they see you, like over 2021, let's say, that it was their first comedy show they ever saw, period. Talking about live? Live. Okay. There's a lot of people still, even friends of mine that like, I'm going to my first stand-up show like this year or whatever. And it's just like, wow, it's crazy. I've loved comedy. I've gone to a lot of shows. But my point is, it's, even if somebody's coming back, most touring acts will go to major cities at once a year at least, Right. If you've seen them before and you love them that much or you just want to see if maybe they got some new stuff because they don't always have all new stuff. It's really good. It's worth going to see them again no matter what, right? But sometimes if you catch the same bits, they always refine, you're always refining your art, right? So the bits are always a little different. You've added some tags or you've kind of like... Knacked out. Yeah, the whole thing. Like it's really... You got to watch your favorite performers even if it's close like in time-wise. If maybe it might be even twice in a year. And, and that's... See, that's the thing, Rob, is like you actually pay attention. Yeah. Like you actually kind of understand um, comedy to the point to where you're going to remember what bits Theo did or Uncle oh, yeah. Joey and you're going to make a note. Whereas my experience is most people, for example, the feedback, like say even after the show, like, oh, what you think? Oh, my God, man, man, my cheeks hurt. We laugh so much. What was your favorite part? Dude, man. Oh, my God. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, but I laugh so much. Dude. Or, or they'll be like. Dude, this is my fifth time seeing you. Every time you're in this area, we always come. And it's like, oh, and I'll tell them, my bad, dude, because, you know, they might have been a joke in there from the last time. They'd be like, honestly, man, like, we laughed. We don't, we don't. Mm. It's like some of maybe vaguely, like, seems familiar, but it's like they don't make a mental memorization of every single tag, every single premise, every single act out. Mm-hmm. Every, they're just kind of like, because you're ordering food, you're with your friend, you're drinking. You're having a good, you're just in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And that bit, like I've probably seen it performed a dozen times, maybe like 10 the, to 12. The, the, the one you did. Yeah. Uh-huh. It, it was great. Like you hit all the beats, you know? So I really hope that everybody enjoyed it. And if they ever see it again live, like if they go see you and you do that bit, it's always like, there's all your, there's an element to that bit that you've always changed every time you've performed it. Well, I'm probably going to take it out now. Yeah. And you know what? Here's another excuse, man, is that bit is really old. And when uh, Rick Gutierrez was like, hey, that's the one I want you to do mm-hmm. for this HBO thing. It's like, OK, I have two opportunities to practice it before San Antonio. So it was, it was literally like I think I had two shows in Cali where it's like, all right, let me bring it back. Let me dust it off and let me kind of walk through it. to see. I think it was like San Jose and um and like Oxnard or something where it's like I'm bringing it out of the stash out of the vaults and I'm kind of just walking through it like okay I forgot one part on that one or I kind of wasn't that confident on that other one but hey it should be good enough by the time HBO I only caught one part you missed which was what the height you didn't mention at the beginning in the middle of the bit where where, he, where he's like he started I, I know this he, with the microphone and he's like you didn't do the gesture where you were, he was calling you short, but then later you reference the little one, you know, when they're, when they call or whatever. Yeah, I know. I, I know was that's... like, man, I hope that they caught that you were the little guy and not the deaf guy. No, I, yeah, no. Trust me. I caught that too. Where I'm like, huh? I'm like, how did they edit this? That's another thing too. I was like, I was how like, did they edit this? Because 
I was like, on the first show, I made sure to say, um, he wasn't even that tall. Like when I go to my wife and say, Hey, the guy says he's deaf. Yeah. He's, no, the guy says he's a deaf basketball coach. He ain't even that tall. I don't believe him. I don't think he's really deaf type of thing. That wasn't it either. Yeah. Cause that was in the first show. Mm. And then, and that, in other words, shit don't add up. Where at the end, it's like the little one stutters, and it's there was like, no height reference at all. Yeah, not even in the beginning or the middle. That sucks. That's what you know. You don't have control, bro. Yeah. You just go and do your part, and it is what it is. That's just inside baseball. That's just you and I. At the end of the day, bro, this is how I see it. It's a credit, and now, now the question is, okay, how do you now monetize that? Yeah, because. You know, the cool thing about MMA fighters and boxers and things like that is that when they get their sponsors, they're like, hey, do you want me to wear the hat in the post-fight interview? Do you want me to wear the shirt in the training leading up to? Do you want me to shout it out? Like, is, is there a patch on my shorts? All that shit adds up, yeah. right? Depending on, okay, you don't got to wear the hat on the post-fight. Or like, okay, we're not doing the patch. You just need to maybe wear a shirt on the training leading up to. Like, there's a whole equation and formula for that. Um, because they have a fight they're building up to. Mm -hmm. That's why for me, it's kind of like, okay, if I want on it, if I want origin boots, if I want these uh, patriotic American made co companies to say, Hey, the legalized freedom tour is brought to you by is presented by, or even the podcast. Have you ever seen podcasts where it's the art and it'll say like brought to uh, you by. Chingo chats presented by DraftKings. Mm -hmm. So boom. That's a whole, it's almost like my shit finna be like NASCAR. Um, Marisol is like, you may have missed the deadline because these companies, they got to figure out where their money's going to go a couple quarters in advance. And, and I'm like, shit, but I definitely, I definitely want to take like, Hey, I'm on HBO. I'm on Netflix. I've been around for a long time. We have, you know, we have an audience and there's no reason why we shouldn't have some sponsorship. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You right. Know? So that'll be something we also work That's towards the goal. Mm -hmm. first quarter of 2022. Uh, but all in all, man, it's like it was cool to see. It was cool to pull up my HBO Max app and be like, all right, you're on the cover. You know, you're all on the cover. It was a really cool cover photo for the uh, Midnight says it looked like a Star Wars poster. Dude, I said the exact same thing. That's dude. hilarious. That's really cool. Mandalorian. <laughs> Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Congratulations again. Thank you, brother. Uh, what's next? What, what's next as far as like big comedy things you think that's not like your own tour? Do you have anything? In the foreseeable future, I mean, you, that you'll be a part of, psh, probably my own thirty-minute special. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously, I don't have no direct connect at HBO or things like that. But I mean, a little bit of research, a couple phone calls or something could be like, hey, um, this is what they require. Like, for example, my buddy Adam Taylor, who put together the uh, just the bit mm -hmm. that I was a part of. Obviously, he knows his thing when it comes to production. He knows his like. The way they put together just a bit with all the different like interstitial like stuff, I almost picture like if I were to do a 30 minute special and he was like the director or whatever, mm -hmm. I almost picture them doing it in a way where like, you know, before the sh comedy starts, there might be a quick little two, three minute thing where it's like, what's up, Chingo Bling? I'm in my hometown. And like, you might see like baby pictures, like it's just something funny. You know, something fun, like an interaction with my mom. Like, there's a joke leading up to, like, like leading up to the actual jokes. Like, hey, ladies and gentlemen, you see the marquee and you see me come out on stage. And then, who knows? Maybe there's a little thing where you pull away midway. Like, after 15 minutes, it cuts back to something like green room, on the road. Just something funny, depending on what the, what the angle is. Uh, where do you do it, one? And how many people are there? What's the audience size? I mean, you want intimate, man. You want like maybe like 350 people or something intimate, low ceilings, you know. Um, have you has uh, Shabs came out yet from the Addison Improv? I don't think so. Okay, I think that was gonna be a Showtime 30 minute or Comedy Central 30 minute. I can't remember, but um, something like that, just some intimate, you know, low ceiling where you could just really connect with the audience not like okay we're throwing that's the reality though a mm -hmm. lot of times you're a part of these things where it's like and we're throwing you out on this big stage and there's a teleprompter and there's a timer and and it's a tv production and we're filming and you have to be uber focused you can't get distracted by anything like that's 
that's where the professionalism comes in. Uh, mm-hmm. I was reading on Reddit. I got did down some rabbit hole of podcasting on Reddit that uh, God, because you brought him up. That's mm-hmm. why I remembered. He either he either got fired from Showtime or he didn't re up his contract because he's going all in on Thick Boy, stu- like his own production studio and his own production warehouse and all that shit. That he's not. I guess I don't know because you know like uh, the food show, food truck diaries, and mm-hmm. a lot of his stuff is like Showtime oriented. Well, that, apparently he's going to be all in on himself. That wait, wait, wait. Food Truck Diaries was a Showtime was thing? Show, yeah. Like that, Showtime. That would air on Showtime? Uh, I don't know if it, it wouldn't air on Showtime, but the production, I believe, was Showtime run. But where would you watch it? On YouTube. Why the fuck Showtime want to make shit for YouTube? That is weird. Some don't add up. Yeah, I don't know. That don't make no sense. Um, Speaking of guns, though, <laughs> taking it back to guns, <laughs> bro, they had a, uh, a gold Trump thing where I guess you could customize your AR below the belt sorry below the belt was uh, Showtime <laughs> oh, his so MMA show that would air on Showtime that's also on YouTube but I just remember that go ahead guns yeah no, th- no those are really well produced I like how they have like all the camera angles and, yeah and I like how one of his main systems is I do commentary you sit me down you put a nice set behind me you get good audio good lighting some nice little lenses where you get a couple angles and I talk about fights yeah. and I give you predictions and it's almost like you're not having to reinvent shit. You're not having to, no te, no te la cabeza. Like you're not having to be like, all right, we're making content. Uh, we need a script. We need wigs. Uh, okay. What costume, what angles, who's going to uh, editing post-production? No, it's just sit me down. Let me talk. That's amazing. Yeah. It's what you're made for. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I'm trying to, uh, we trying to do, man we trying to do on top of the HBOs and all this type of stuff. Yeah. And back to guns though. Yeah. I just wanted to mention that they had a thing that said Trump on it was gold and all the attachments. And shit and what was it? It was like, um, I guess for like an AR, like attachments, I don't ah, know all the terms yeah. of all the things where I guess you customize, you swap out some stuff. Maybe they go on top and then they had some ARs that were wrapped like us flag type shit. And it was a type of special wrap where it kept the metal up under it from rusting and all this type of stuff. That ass. Um, but yeah, anyway, I know we already talked about the range and shit, but that shit was fun. Um, you know, got a shotgun. Well. You got one? Yeah, we bought a Mossberg. Oh, shit. Added to the collection. Okay. Where's the safe at? We're going to put the safe in the podcast studio? Fuck a safe. <laughs> we got that shit ready to go. RTG <laughs> ready to go. You ever seen those uh, lock boxes that you put on the counter? On, like it's you're supposed to put it on your nightstand, and it's got like a finger combination where you just kind of like grip it a certain way, and it opens. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I've seen. Interest you or no? You want to have it right, right there, right there, like Chingy. I, <laughs> honestly, man, I really don't know. I don't know what all we're gonna get. Mighty Soul basically said we'll need a safe for the extra guns, like the ones that aren't handy, mm-hmm. ready to go. Yeah, it's for the extra ones, like the ones that you don't need right now. Oh, okay. Um. But yeah, uh, yeah, man, we tore up. We, I, I'm gonna show here. How about this? Let me show you a picture of the devastation of how we lit up. Anyway, we lit up these targets. Okay. Hey, you want on oh, here? You want to look at that? Aye. Aye. Okay. Oh, damn. Are these both here? It's all over the place. Uh, my brother-in-law, the one that has a huge hole in the middle. Yeah. My brother-in-law helped me with that one, and then the other one's like pretty much all me. Going with with the earlobe shot. Oh, let me switch back to me. The earlobe shot. Pretty good. Look at that. There's a big ass just black hole right in the middle of this person's body. When I started going for head, like when we moved it back, when we pushed it back and I started going for headshots, that's where I grazed the motherfucker. I hit him in the ear and the earlobe. And then one I just completely like, like it just, pew. Dude, that motherfucker was far back. I was like, you know what? Let me just stick to the center mass. Yeah. How far was it? You know? <clears throat> oh man. I, I, it's hard to tell the distance. Um, At that point, it might've been. Might have been 30 feet. Pretty good. At that point. Pretty good. But uh, but then, you know, we had that whole 20 feet. It's like, okay, your assailant is approaching you. Put that motherfucker closer. Cha, cha, cha. Pa, 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 pa. It was fun, bro. You uh, ever seen John Wick? Have you seen the John Wick movies? No. Oh, what? No. Please watch that soon. Please watch those soon. Okay. One, two, and three. Okay, let me write it down. Uh, I listened to our episode when um, I did a terrible job of explaining Save the Cat, which by the, which by the it's way, it's in the box. Yes, that Save Can't the wait. Cat, that Save the Cat goes to the movies. I'm gonna get you the other one as well. That's the second one, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's it's probably over there somewhere. Uh, I don't think you did a bad job explaining that. Why? Why? What made you say that? Some of my terminology, like it was just very clunky because I was just very rusty on how to explain. This well, there's a lot of inside baseball, a lot of yeah. film creation terms <laughs> people might not get or be yeah. into. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, it was a good episode. Like talking about John Candy and the polka music. And yeah. So hey, shout out to all my Polish people, man. Shout out to all my Polish people, like. Not to get RPT ish, but they're Eastern Europeans and they had to escape some shit. And that's, bro, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for the, what were they escaping? Authority, whatever, whatever shit they were escaping, religious persecution, I don't know what it was. The fact that they came as refugees to like Mexico and Texas along with like Germans. Bro, think about it. Mexican beer, beers that we consider to be Mexican Mm -hmm. are like Austrian. Polish, German, they brought that technology. M- Mexicans were Aztec. We were eating frogs and tamales and shit. Like they were growing corn. They were not <laughs> brewing and fermenting hops, right? So if it weren't for the Polish, Mexican regional music wouldn't even sound the way it does. That's true. It would not. Bum, uh, bum, for example, bum. if it wasn't for them coming over here and bringing their polka, it, we would have been tribal. Like drums. Hmm. That's what, you know, it's this shit. Yeah, no, I'm way more for the polka than the. But no, seriously, though, think about it, bro. Like, that's called pre Hispanic. Those are pre Hispanic drums. So anytime you think of um, Mexican culture, you have pre Hispanic, meaning like before the Spaniards showed up. So it was like corn based dishes and like chiles. Right. I mean, we invented some dope shit, right? Los Indios, they invented like chewing gum, chewing bubble gum. They invented uh, hot chocolate, anything chocolate and cacao related. Mexicans invented that shit. Um, tequila and all that type of stuff. I think that came later. Uh, mariachi. I think that came from like Italians. The Loteria game. I think Italians brought that. Mm. Um, things that we consider like, no, eso es en Mexicano. Mm. Huh. I That's didn't it. know that. Yeah. Like. Beer? Beer ain't Mexican. I mean, it is, but it, it came from uh, Ju- uh, Europeans. I had no idea. Yeah, like the more you know. Austrian, like Bavarian, uh, German, Polish, all these things. So many things that we consider to be Mexican, Mexican are really like, yeah, they're Mexican, but it was brought over by immigrants. Do you like cigars? Random, but um, I do. I, I dig it. I'm just not like all in like that. Yeah. It's not a habit. No, same, but I love bourbons and whiskey, so I started just kind of like going down the, the rabbit hole of cigars, and I got a few at this place that they were like, oh, this pairs, it's like wine, like it pairs well with this kind of bourbon or this kind of whatever drink where, or, or tequila. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Uh, there's a place in Sugarland called Imperial Cigars, and then Total Wine actually has, the Total Wine stores, they have a really big humidor, you can walk in there and like... So they will pair a certain type of tobacco with a certain type of... Uh, yeah. Alcohol. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just kind of got like a smorgasbord of stuff, and had a but- and my old roommate, a buddy of mine, come, come over and just kind of like... You know, he's also recently gotten into it. He works in liquor. So I was like, oh, it's funny you asked me about that because I just started getting into it myself for work. So, uh, yeah, we just sat on the patio yesterday. It was like 45 degrees or 50 degrees outside. Just, you know, turned the little pit on, had a little fire, smoked a cigar, had a had like a glass and a half of bourbon and then Damn. had to go. And it was fucking great. It was wonderful. <laughs> you motherfucker, you drove after that? No, I was at my house. Oh, you said had to go? He had to go. Oh, uh, but yeah, do you, who created, I just wanted to ask to see if you liked it. So I knew for future, but also who created the cigars? What who do you think? Who created the cigars? Maybe some native American somewhere like native. Uh, I know it's big in Cuba and Dominican Republic, stuff like that. The ancient Mayans. Oh, the Mayans. Yeah. Invented smoking tobacco. This was in fact, all the cigars, uh, all that cigars were for many years. They thought that, okay, hold on. Let me get the exact. Uh, they are thought to have been invented by ancient Mayans who wrapped the tobacco in either palm or plantain leaves. Wrapped them inside of palm or plantain leaves? Yeah. And then did they smoke that part too? Seems like it. In fact, the ancient, Mayans, uh, pot, ancient Mayan pot from, ni- from the 10th century depicts a Mayan man smoking one of these primitive cigars. Wow. Bro, can you imagine like when uh, primitive people had to dis- like, be like, hey... We gotta smoke all these different things and see what it does. Yeah, so right? what, what like, kills you and what doesn't kill you. It's like you. okay, yeah, okay, that one because you know these plants contain these chemicals like nicotine or THC or whatever. 
And it's like, motherfuckers had to discover that shit. Like, bro, when you smoke that one, that one right there. Dude, that's peyote. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. salvia. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> a la verga. Dude. Sa- Ooh. No, thank you, sir. Yeah, I was never in that shit. But man, everybody that, all my cousins and shit, they were like, yeah, I can see little aliens over there. These cactuses are turning into fucking like. What'd they do? Salvia or peyote? Yeah. Salvia? Salvia, yeah. I heard salvia just last like. Yeah, it's pretty quick, oh. but it's like really intense. Yeah. It almost, it almost I, have no, sounded, I have no desire. To yeah, do. I don't either. It, but it sounded kind of DMT-ish before I knew what DMT was. It was a long time ago. But now that, I probably would give a, a whirl because that's also very short. DMT? Yeah. But it's intense like a motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, Nick Swartzen tells, an, I think it was Nick Swartzen told a really amazing story about that on uh, Theo's podcast. How did, he, how did it transform him? Or what, what change came about? Uh, I think he also kind of described it like an, an intense mushroom trip. And I think that's what helped him either get sober or, or go back to being sober or just kind of like looking at his life a certain way. And it was also during the, uh, the pandemic. So he went to, uh, was it Key West? Yeah. I, I started hearing that episode. Yeah, it was really good. And he was just like, man, I was just like, that's what kind of got me through the whole lockdown and being away from everybody and being away from comedy. He even contemplated retiring from comedy altogether. Oh man, I need to go back and finish listening to it. Yeah. Uh, Love Nick Swartz. I, I thought um when when he first started saying like like yeah man I said you know what and I'm paraphrasing it stop me if I'm like way off but basically the lockdown was happening and he needed to get away mm-hmm. and somehow some way he ended up in Key West yeah and um you know kicking it with the locals and just almost like a sabbatical like yeah he was supposed to be there for like two weeks and he ended up staying a whole year you know what man like when you ain't got no kids and no wife yeah. Because trust me, when, when when it was just me and my wife, and obviously Mickey, she's been around since the beginning, but um, I didn't have her all the time. So when it would be just me and Marisol, and because we're both very, um, I'll use the word romantic in mm-hmm. terms of, not romantic, Aww. it's like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> this is what I mean. I don't mean romantic in the sense of like, wow, Chingo's very thoughtful. I know. No, no, not that. It's romanticizing the idea of starting fresh in a different place. Yeah. Meaning like falling in love with the place. Yeah. So uh, let's say you're in Costa Rica and it's like, man, I wouldn't mind another extra two weeks or maybe two months of this. Like it could do you some good, especially when you're in the rat race. And it sounded like that's what Nick Swartzen was um, describing. He's yep. just like, bro, like I'd go to the local dive, you know, like when's the last time you had like a little escape, type of getaway like, like years you feel like you unplug like years probably like four four years yeah sometimes it all it takes is just even just a little weekend mm-hmm. it could even be like corpus christi <laughs> yeah well that's what my soul was saying a while back when i went to uh where'd i go most recently waco yeah 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 about doing that she wants to do it every month i think something like that basically the idea is like a little date getaway where it doesn't even have to be far. It's just kind of like, um, hey, let's go to Austin, peep the comedy scene, get an Airbnb, better than hotel. Let's get an Airbnb, like find a coffee shop. These days, find me a jujitsu gym. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Um, but basically just hang out, like almost like like we're dating, like fucking watch Netflix, go get breakfast, like just sim- nothing, nothing fancy at all. Yeah, that's what Don and I talk about that too, about trying to do that more this coming up year. Because after, I mean, everyone's probably in the same boat. Like you're trying to escape what 2020 was and then you get into 2021 and it, it has still been just as chaotic minus being fortunate to live in a state or city that's not making you feel like you're in uh, Nazi Germany. Uh, but now going into 2022, you're like, okay, can I get a semblance of normalcy so that we can get away and just kind of live our lives the way we were? Not to get away because we want to escape life, but just get away and like live our lives the way we wanted to before all this. Especially if they try to lock us down again. Yeah. That's going to be, uh, people are going to really be. Yeah. Sure. You're going to have to stay in the state at that point. And yeah. I want to go out. of. Yeah. State. Especially if they start to like, you know, like, uh, hey, all you unvaccinated people, like no more air travel. Uh, like you have these like Eric Swalwell and people tweeting things out like, you know, it is just it's just it is just bananas. That actually that, reminds me. Go ahead. Yeah, it is just bananas that you will have unvaccinated people moving about freely in this country and they have not done the right thing. Because we're on the subject. You brought up technology earlier. I forgot what you said. And now we're talking about all this jazz. Um, let's kind of mix the two worlds and talk about the Swedish company that is mixing technology <laughs> with uh, COVID passports because, you know, this might come to the United States before you know it. 
COVID microchip. Imagine showing your COVID passport with just a flash of your arm. The Swedish company says it has a chip that can hold information about your VAC status. It is so small you can embed it into your arm. <laughs> the chip uses pre-existing technology that the firm was already developing. Stockholm-based Epicenter has been working on human compa compatible tech Implants for years. Implants are a very versatile technology that can be used for many different things. And uh, right now, it's very convenient to have a COVID passport always accessible on your implant. The chip uses near-field communication, NFC. It can send data to any NFC-compatible device, such as a smartphone. The tech is not new, but use in humans has grown popular in the last decade. The first person to have a microchip implanted was Kevin Warwick in 1998. Epicenter claims the procedure is completely reversible. <laughs> Dude, the chips are not yet for sale. Oh, you mean not yet mandatory? But the firm made headlines this year when staff had pass keys implanted in their hands. It's also known for throwing parties when employees get chipped. That's a big ass chip. It looks like mouse poop. <laughs> and this came from the South China Morning Post. Yeah, I don't know their I don't know their their stance. I don't know if they're one of those like maybe they're full of defectors they're reporting, but uh mm. yeah, that's where it's coming from. Pretty creepy. <clears throat> and I like how she scanned her hand and still had to put in a fucking code. Yeah, that was weird. What the fuck's the point? Yeah. Um change gears real quick. Get the blood pressure down. Yo, we went to Second Baptist um on Sunday. Well, we went to church. Bro, their Christmas what do you call that, man? Christmas um, show? Special? Dun, 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 dun. Bro, hold on a second. Second Baptist Church. I mean, the level of production, like ballerina, singers, choir, the trumpet, the, the, the horn section, percussion, the music, the, the, the acting, the sets. You know what I mean? Like the, how they told the whole story. Let me find the part. Like they acted everything out. Mm. All the different sets and And the Spirit of God moved upon the face. Like the, the creation. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Wondrous, glorious light that drove out the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. Amazing production. And Penny was there live with us. We didn't send her to the class. Oh, really? We kept her. Like a whole play. Damn, that's intense. Where they came to get Jesus and everything. Check it out. I mean, a production and a half. Yeah, I'm actually skimming through it myself. Is it, is it the, the light has come? Yes. And you now he has the, uh, the, uh, the manger. And... You know what was interesting, bro? When they were acting out how, um, I guess, the angel Gabriel came to Mary to tell her, you know, God, finna, um, you finna had a Messiah in your belly. And she's like, but I'm, I'm not married. And, you know, what will Joseph think? And then it shows, it shows Joseph. Like coming back from a trip and he's sitting there and he got the news and he's like, uh, he says, if I, if I, if I don't claim this baby, she'll be stoned to death. Right. Cause they're mm -hmm. going to be like, Oh, she's pregnant. You were out of town. What's going on? She cheated. And he's like, but if I don't, you know, I was like, Oh, they're really addressing like the elephant in the room yeah. where he's having to make that choice. Like, do I back her up and support her with this angel baby? You know, this Messiah. Interesting, bro. That's fucking crazy. I was trying to find a, the, a clip from... My soul sent me a clip where they were just jamming out hardcore. Uh, I couldn't find it, but the production value of all this place, all these places, um, songs and, and whatever, it's, it's crazy. I'm looking at it like this is a fucking straight-up movie. Some HBO shit. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, 
and we were there live. And then I forgot my wallet, so they come around with the thing, and I'm like, <laughs> I was not catching the bling. And then the cross goes up, and there's Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. But they acted out real cool, where it's like something, something about like the census was happening, and all the hotels were full, and they were looking for a place to give birth. And um, they asked, I guess, a young this young lady, and she's like, "Well, we have a manger where the animals stay." And it talks about how like even the anim even the animals knew something special was happening because they were so calm and still and. It was amazing. That's cool, man. Yeah. Christmas spirit, brother. Christmas spirit. Yeah, by the way, since this uh, this one's going to drop on Thursday, we'll do our RPT Christmas Eve special tomorrow or Thursday. But um, what do you got planned? What's going on? What's what's the family doing this year? Uh, Just, you know, ultimately, we would love to. Um, once we move, we would love to just be like, OK, we're doing Christmas at our house. Like y'all can come by if y'all want. We're tired of having to, like, please everybody and go everywhere. Right. So. um. So I believe what we're doing is we're doing Christmas Eve. We're going to split it all up Christmas Eve with Muddy Soul's family. And then I believe Christmas Day will stop by my family. So, uh, so yeah, holidays again, more food, more eating, more gifts, more spending, more, uh, <laughs> more stuff from China. So I, I did my best to make sure that like, hey, man, don't get, don't, don't get nothing China made. Yeah. Do not get me nothing China made. I don't want nothing China made. I don't want to see no Nikes under the tree. Yep. Um, nothing woke. Keep we're, all that woke shit away from me. We're at the store and Don's like, you said you wanted some new shoes. Why don't you just go look for some? I got some Nikes on now because it's already had them right before I came to this to this conclusion. I would no longer buy any. And she was like, you know, go look at what they got. I was like, mm, I'm good. She's like, you sure? I was like, yeah, I'm good. Oh, because it was what a Nike store? Yeah, it was all just Nike stuff. Oh. So I was like, I'm gonna find some of this. Uh, I don't know what company it's gonna be, but it's gonna be something that looks cool, but also preferably American made, obviously. I'm curious, uh, those, what are they called? Freedom Industries? Yeah, Freedom Industries is what I'm looking at right now. Do they sell any in town where you get a retailer? You can actually Not see in them? Houston. They got a store in Dallas. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wearing punk-ass Nikes right now, too, bro. Um, <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah, no, I, 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 have a, I have a few pair. I got rid of some. I have a few pair left. Um, yeah, man. I don't know. I'm going to look into Origin Boots. You mentioned that earlier. I meant to ask you. What is that? That's uh, Jocko Willing. Oh, that's it. That's yeah. what it's called, Origin. And they sponsor Bryce Mitchell. Oh. So check this out. When Good I had, to know. when I got on the plane, when I got on the plane to uh, go to Cali, I was wearing Nikes, punk ass Nikes, right? Well, guess what? Two two reasons. I took them off in the restroom, and I put on my boots. I'll give you two reasons. Number one, you had a dude out there shining boots, shining shoes. And he hooked, he hooked the motherfuckers up, foo, 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 foo. hooked them up. Num reason number two, Bryce Mitchell. Have you heard the quote on Theo Vaughn when he, when he said, I wore these boots on the plane because I'm looking for terrorists. He said, first thing I do, I'm looking for terrorists. I don't remember that. He says, uh, he's, he said, oh, what kind of boots are those? Like, I got them $5 at a garage sale. He's like, just regular ass kicking boots. <laughs> this motherfucker wears boots on the plane just in case some shit goes down. That's funny. And, um, and he says, you know how they work? You know, they're going to have about four terrorists, but you're going to have about two sleepers on there as well. I guess they're like undercover terrorists or something. I don't know what a sleeper is mm. exactly. But I literally thought about that. So, you know what? He's right. Let me go ahead and put the boots on. I like their, uh, I like their Odyssey rash cards here. Who is Odyssey a brand? Uh, I guess that's probably what they call it. Oh, them. it says Origin. Yeah, it's Origin's website, but this might, might be like their collection, the Odyssey collection. I don't know if Mighty Souls gave me a rashy for, um, for Christmas or not. But I think I'm gonna go in here and give me, give me, give me my own. I've always liked uh, the schools that do the the sleeves rankings, you know, like white, blue, purple, brown. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah, that's what it is. Oops. Some school do it around the uh, the belt, like there'll be a, a like the belt will be on the uh, on the rash guard itself, so it looks like you're wearing a belt, but it's built in, you know, like the like this mm. instead of the arm. But I much prefer the arm. I don't know why. I just think it looks cool. They don't have a black belt rashy. Huh? Um. No, but it's probably this one, the red, red? one, yeah, because I, I think say, the stripes no... are red on the black belt, oh, I think. Because yeah. there's no red belt. There is a red belt. Yeah. Oh, there is. Mm -hmm. Oh, no shit. Yeah. <clears throat> Shows how much I know. Uh, <laughs> scroll down. Okay, they got wallets I like the minim Yeah, I like the minimalistic wallets. The boots look dope. I like the, the brown color one more. He's got his own, I didn't know he sets supplements. Oh, that boy sells jeans, geese. Uh, Mr. Willink, if you're listening, sir, um, 
we would like to reach out to your uh, sponsorship department. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, see, it's the red stripes on design. Well, okay, they sell geese, belts. All this shit's made in America, too. That's cool. I like um, those beanies. What the jeans look like? Hundred about uh, about two hundred dollars. Oh, this is a uh, these are field pants. These are your working pants. Mm-hmm. These are your shop pants. Know what I'm saying? Really? Okay. Pretty fashionable. So yeah, I like these. Check out them boots. Yeah, I like those. The Built Boot Whiskey Big Lug. What Three, up? Three hundred seventy eight dollars. What's the details on there? Uh, built to order. Currently ships in eight to twelve weeks. Yeah, they make them hold by hand. Uh, but that's really good for a good boot. Three hundred seventy-eight dollars. That's cheap for a good boot. I don't say cheap. But you know what I'm saying, guys? Mm-hmm. If you go Com- try to, comparable. Yeah, comparable. You try to go get a good pair of Ariats or some shit like that. It's hundreds of dollars. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna start rocking boots more often. Um, can anybody recommend? Do you know of some comfy boot like everyday cowboy boots? Like, no, 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 no. Like, like, like for, these. I mean, I'm not against cowboy boots, right? I'm not against that because I. I was going to wear my little camo t-shirt I just bought. Okay. And then I got, um, I was going to wear my orange, the bright orange legalized freedom caps, but I don't want to leak it yet because I need a photo shoot so I can release all this merch we got coming. But yeah, if anybody could re- uh, recommend like, I mean, kind of like just some uh, everyday, because I have some red wings too. Mighty mm-hmm. Soul got me those for like my birthday or Christmas years ago. I have some red wings. <clears throat> These are, uh. This is one of my, I mean, my favorite brand, like Ariat's, because they're super light, typically. Mm-hmm. And they're super comfy. I like the square toe, like this one. Um, you could wear them every day, and they're pretty comfortable. Reasonably priced. Yeah, they're kind of cheap. Are yeah. they, are they uh, where are them hoes made, man? I, I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. They're, they're made, made in China. China. Don't say it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 2022, man. You got the camo. You got the boots. You know what I'm saying? Buku Glocks. Hey, but guess what, man? Assets, stay ready. You yeah. know what I mean. Uh, see if you could pass me that website where they sell the gold. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, shit, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. J M Bullion. Yeah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't hurt to. I don't know what their um, podcast deals work like the reads and mm-hmm. the sponsorships and all that. But I mean, that's where my mind is right now. Like, if you're gonna give somebody something, gift them uh, an asset like some gold, some ammo, a firearm. You know, somebody you love. Hey, these are the kind of sponsors I want. I want to see if, like, brought to you by a gun range, you know, brought to you by a gun manufacturer, got brought to you by, you know, some patriotic shit, some made in America shit, like the Freedom Industries, like, um, super useful shit, useful stuff, especially to all the fellas, man, all the husbands, all the dads, all the fathers. Um, you know, I'm 42, but I'm starting to really see the importance. People are like, you just now? <laughs> but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you the man of the house. You have all daughters. You know what I mean? It's like, like, you know, do you keep it on you? You know, it's constitutional carry. Like, I want to get, how hard is it to get the uh, concealed handgun license? I don't have one from what I've heard. It's not that hard. Okay, I want to go ahead and get the license because from what I've heard, if some shit hits the fan, it just like looks better in the eyes of the law that you actually are licensed mm-hmm. versus... Oh, I waited for the law to change to protect me so that I could have it on me. Sure. I agree. I'm all, I have the same notion. Um, I got my wife a holster because, you know, they sell the purses where you, it got like the holster inside. Mm-hmm. So if you're walking, you could have it. You could be ready. But, you know, they say a gun in your purse is like the worst place to have it only because if somebody's trying to snatch your purse, boom, they don't take your gun. If they're trying to snatch you and now you're reaching in your purse for your gun, well, now they... Now they know you got something in there. Yeah. Like, just have it on you. There, the, there's this brand. Bah, 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 see if I can find it. Um, <laughs> this, it's not this one in particular, but I don't, I'm sure Soul's probably seen it. Where they have concealed carries uh, in the leggings. Isn't that genius? What, what the fuck? Concealed carry leggings? Yeah. So there's a pocket in there for your weapon. You could either keep it in your back or it's like a little built-in holster. Yeah. I wonder what size guns. Uh, I, I'm sure the baby Glock fits the 43X. There's a couple of them. And um, Jocelyn, you actually met her at Revolution. She, she, 
I don't know if she's sponsored by them, but she always posts. I don't know if this particular brand, but this particular because she loves. She's all about two A. She actually she actually had an issue in her neighborhood not too long ago where she there was somebody trying to break into a car, and she just went out. She went out there with a gun, and uh, her and the neighbors cornered the person in the in their fucking uh, in, in a neighbor's bushes until the cops got there with their guns. Her and a neighbor. Her and her, like two neighbors, yeah. So three neighbors had. So three people had guns on this person. Yeah. Fuck around and find out. Yeah, what man. neighborhood she? I mean, like what area? Uh, I don't remember. Tell you the truth. Because guess what, man? Houston, Houston crime going up. It's looking like Chirac out there. <laughs> wow, look at that. Letters. I mean, how safe? Why not just have an actual holster? I guess because you don't want people to see you have a gun on you. Yeah, ideally you want to conceal it as best you can, right? <clears throat> but anyhow, I don't know if this is the brand. I'm um, just one of them. Tactica. So you'd be opposed to having your, your gun shown? No. So why is it ideal to not? I don't know if it's ideal, but some people prefer to not show. Because right. oh, some yeah. people might say that if, you, if it's seen, then the perpetrator can grab it. You know, oh. If someone's trying to pull some shit and they see that you've got one out, they'll wait until they can maybe get their hands on yours before they try to do anything. It or, should be a deterrent, if anything. You would think so, but someone that's trying to fuck people up you know, in a crowd, mm. they don't, they're not thinking like that. Oh, by the way, shout out to HPD. Um, you know, they have HPD at Second Baptist, right? Obviously, you got to have security and stuff these days. And um, the dude was like, hey, man, I like the podcast. Oh, yeah. Take a picture. He said, the other officer recognized you, and you know, I came over to verify, whatever, whatever. And then my, my wife, of course, because she sees me getting, in, getting into all this stuff, she's just like, don't be asking if HPD's hiring. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, sometimes lions, not sheep. Sometimes sheepdog recognize other sheepdog. Did you, by chance, I knew you were out of town, but did you watch any fights this weekend? No, right? What the fuck was I doing? I missed the Derek Lewis fight, man. Where, oh, I was, at a, I was in the airport. Oh, let me tell you this airport story. I was in the airport all day. Okay, uh, I don't think Mighty Soul listens to this podcast, and if she does, she probably would have tuned out by now. <laughs> True. So let me tell you the story. And I'm whispering because I'm paranoid. All right. There were a lot of mix-ups with my flights, right? Like the app not refreshing, the Southwest app. It was a pain in the ass. So I did the event at the Disney Resort for IES, the company, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that night, I'm checking in with the wife. Hey, boo, it went straight. Everything's good. I'm about to call it a night. I'm tired. I was traveling all day, and I got to get up tomorrow. She said, what time is your flight tomorrow? I looked at the app. There was already a lot of hiccups with this shit, with my flights. I look at the app. It said, oh, it says I don't leave till like 1025. So I'm going to have time to maybe even get a workout in or get breakfast. Right? Uh -huh. So to my knowledge, I really don't even have to really set an alarm. Or I set a late alarm even, right? Like you got to be there at 925, I don't know, whatever. Come to find out, I wake up the next morning, right? I'm up, it might be like 7 a.m. I just want, I wake up and I'm like, all right, so am I going to get breakfast? Am I, what am I going to do? Should I shower? And I'm like, let me look at my phone. I look at the app. It must have updated or refreshed now to the accurate information. And it's like, holy shit, call Uber now. Throw your shit in the bag, run downstairs. That's literally what I had to do because I wake up at seven. I glance at my phone. Let me check the app. And it's like, the plane leaves and it's like, oh my God, I, I literally am moments away from when I should already be there. I oh, like to be there at fuck. least an hour ahead, right? Yeah. So now Uber shows up, Asian dude. I, think, I don't know if he's Vietnamese or something. He's like, hey, how's it going? I say, hey man, I'm running late, bro. He's like, okay, okay, I got you. And he, he dude, he's had to stop. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. He had to stop at a, a light or two. If he had not stopped at that light, I would have made that flight, Rob. Oh, no. So, mind you, Marisol does not know any of this. She just, let me tell you what she knows, all right? What she thinks she knows. So, Buddy is hauling ass. He gets me there as fast as he can. I'm flying out of Long Beach Airport, which is super laid back, super laxed. Not a lot of people. It's nothing like LAX. Mm -hmm. It's super chill. Like, it's like a few terminals and it's the kind where where the airplane is outside and you got to like walk outside and go up the little ramp it's not the one with the tunnel okay. right okay so now i'm like okay i don't have to check luggage that's good where do i run um 
I have the app on my phone. That's my boarding pass. I'm like, so I'm like, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, let's find TSA because I'm not checking luggage and I got the app. So now the TSA line, I was like, oh my God. Uh, they're like, what's wrong? Like people, people that are like, oh my God. I was like, man, I'm running late. My plane's about to leave like, like in 15 minutes or something like that. And I'm like, they don't have clear here. I already gave my biometrics to China so I can use clear. Fuck it. And they're like, no, they have TSA pre. They're like, go. Everyone's super helpful. They're like, go get in the TSA pre line. I was like, but I'm not TSA pre. They're like, just go up there and just tell them. And I went and tried. And he's like, oh, you're not TSA pre. I was like, ah. So now I got to go get in the back of the line. Here's the story. All that was set up. This is the story right here. Right? This is where the story begins. Everyone is so helpful. They're like, hey, what happened? What'd they tell you? I was like, TSA said I'm not TSA pre. They're like, well, come, come get back to where you were. Uh, uh, he's, he, he's not cutting. Let him up here. He was up here with us. He was up here with us. So now I'm like, oh, man, thanks, guys. And they're like, well, ask these people right here. Because it's like the Z. Mm -hmm. It's like the zigzag. They're like, well, ask them. It was an Antifa looking ass bitch with purple hair. And I'm like, hey, do you mind if I cut? You know, because hey, my flight's about to. She's like, all right, whatever. So boom, now I moved forward. And then someone else is like, well, come up here too, man. Now, dude, now I'm feeling the Christmas spirit, bro. Everybody's doing Christmas traveling. And, it, and all of a sudden, I literally, like, as so many people let me cut, cut, cut up through the, the zigzag, I literally look back at the, at the crowd of people. I, I look, there's a, there's, a pa, there's a beat. I was like, this is like the end of the movie where I'm trying to rush to the... <laughs> and I'm like, man, I literally said this. No fucking joke, bro. I said, man, thank you guys. I said, look at America. You know what I'm saying? You know how people be like, <laughs> you know how people be like, look at God. I was like, man, I was like, see, man, this is how we make America great again. Bro, I swear to God. I swear to God, bro. I stopped, looked, and I said, see, man, look at America. And then I and then now I'm that much closer to the TSA machines. And I'm just like, you know how like you gotta piss your pants and yeah. you're like, Come on, go, 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 go. And even the dude, the dude that's next to me, he's like, dude, he's like, man, I'm nervous for you. <laughs> he says, he says, dude, now that we're at the part where people putting their shit in the tray and it's on the little um, conveyor. He's like, dude, tell them, tell them. Everyone literally is like, dude, tell them, like, jump ahead of them with your tray. And I was like, no, no, I've already, they, so many people have already let me cut. Like, the least I could do is just be patient, let this man put his boots and all his shit in his bin. And hopefully they're still boarding C class, B class. And I can just get the last shitty middle seat. That's fine. It's my fault anyway. So now I'm like hauling ass to terminal. I mean, uh, gate number two, whew, 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 top speed. Ah, good thing. I'm alpha male and shit. You know what I'm saying? Good thing. I'm uh, training and shit for Navy SEALs. Whew, whew. I get up to the thing. The guy's like, um, oh, you must be Pedro. And I'm like, yes, I'm here. I'm thinking, he knows my name. They're waiting on me. He's like, we already closed the door to the, to the plane. We're going to have to rebook you. Um, you're going to, um, it was like the next, you're going to have to get on the noon flight or something now. So I'm like, all right, it's my fault. I felt so good about my fellow Americans being so courteous that like, it wasn't even about making the flight anymore. It was almost like, fuck it. It's my fault. I'll chill three hours at this airport, whatever. I'll hang to, I'll get a meal. I'll take my time. I'll get some coffee. I'll make some notes on my phone, like what sponsors and shit we could hit up for next year. Woo -dee -woo. And now I'm waiting. Uh -huh. You'll turn this story into a bit. Um, it, it might lack a little bit, maybe as I talk through it, maybe there's some parts to condense it. Right. So now I'm waiting on this noon flight. So they now they call my name, Pedro Herrera, please come to the thing. I come up they're like, Hey, so there's a mechanical issue we don't know how long the mechanic is going to take. This, I already don't like this kind of talk. I don't want to hear about mechanics working on my plane. Hmm. And they're like, we don't know how long the mechanic's going to take, but here's what we're going to do. This plane is delayed. It's going to cause you to miss your connecting flight. So now we got to rebook you again on a direct flight, leaving out of Long Beach, straight to Houston. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, even better. I ain't got to stop nowhere. She says, but you're going to get home at 9 p.m. And this plane now doesn't lead to like 3.50 or something. Mm. So now I've literally been there all fucking day. 
And now I got to sit around. Now, I done had three meals at this place now. I done had three meals. I done made all kind of notes. I done made all kind of phone calls. I done heard every fucking Dr. Peter McCullough, Bobby Kennedy, War Room Panda, everything. I, I done heard every audio book. I done caught up on every MMA podcast. Finally, I'm on this plane straight home. And I'm landing in the evening and my wife has no idea. She just, all she knows is this. Oh, so that sucks that um, there was a mechanical issue on your flight and they had to rebook you because you're going to miss your connecting flight and they put you on a really late direct flight. That's all she knows. Mm -hmm. She don't know about, hey, sir, you can cut the line. Why does she not know about this? Because I didn't want to tell her that like, hey, remember the night before when I said my plane don't leave till like 1025? It really was leaving like at 8 a.m. But the stupid fucking app, bro. You'll never trust that app again. I mean, I don't know what it is. Like, why it doesn't refresh? There was even an issue. This story ain't as juicy, but there was even an issue on the way out to, uh, to Cali because Marisol had, I was supposed to fly out on the 17th, come home on the 18th. She had accidentally booked everything, flying out on the 18th, coming back on the 19th. So when I go to check in to leave to Cali, the kiosk is like, yeah, dude, I don't know what's up with your rapid rewards. Like, we're not finding you. There is no trip. And I'm like, what? And I look at the app, and it's like, oh, it's tomorrow. And I told my, I didn't want to wake her up. So I'm, like, talking to the help desk. And then later, when I told her all I had to do to make it to this event, she's like, I had, up, I had changed all that. She's like, I had changed all that. I had moved it already. I realized my mistake. I changed it from the 17th to the 18th. This, this, and that. And I was just, I was like, for whatever reason, it did not reflect. It did not go through. It fucking sucked. That's crazy. So it was like. You're being targeted. Like literally, bro. Literally, like I was always at a, a kiosk. I was always at a service desk. They were always having to help me. They're always having to reroute. Yeah, I texted you Saturday forgetting that you were out of town about the fights. And you're like, I'm fucking stuck in an airport right now. Yeah, you're like, like oh. you're like, Derek Lewis about to fight. You won't watch it. I'm like, dude, I'm at an airport, bro. So you were there, damn, you were there most of the time. The entire day. It was an entire travel day. Literally travel day. I landed at nine and I've been eating airport food all day. I was spent, it at least good? Uh, no. No, no. Airport, food is, airport food is rarely good. Did you at least watch the uh, finish to Derek's fight? Last night, I was trying to pull it up on ESPN Plus and then Let's see if this all is this it. stuff with the kids. Of it. If Derek Lewis times that right hand off of one of those kicks, yep. it could be a problem for Dawkins. That's the classic counter. All right, leg kick, right hand. Big boys. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, there's that roundhouse yeah. kick. He will go airborne several times throughout the fight now. What he's round is this? First round. Oh, First. Oh, he's punching big now. Chris Look out. Okay, Chris rewind a little bit. Rewind a little, little bit. Start one more yet. Okay, oh, un poquito más, un poquito más. There. Let's see what a barrage starts. The kick. Okay, so there's a the kick. Up. He will go airborne several times. Now he's shuffling around the cage. With the pressure. Oh, and then he came in with punches. Oh, he's punching big now. Look, when he gets him in a clinch here. Wow. Okay. I mean, the starts hitting a couple of uh, punches on the inside well. right here. Boom, boom. He hits Derek a couple times with uppercut. Oh, and then he catches him. Oh, oh my out, God. Did you see his whole body? Oh, yeah. He, body just, he went out on his feet. His whole body. Watch. He clinches him, and then he gets to see dirty boxing on the inside there. And then, boom. He's out right there. It's like his head flew back, and yeah. his, his brain turned off. For sure. Did you see the other knockout? The Paul Woodley? Oh, my God. Yeah. That was brutal. I just saw the little... I don't know what to make of that, honestly. I don't know. The comments obviously are like, this is most rigged. Tyron just did it for the money kind of thing. And What's rigged? How? I mean, I didn't see the whole fight, but like, what's rigged about it? Tyron was just standing there. His hand, for starters, oh, he, his hand was down. Oh, and he, he just put stood his there. hand down. Oh, like, he put what? his hand down. It, to me, it looks so fast. Yeah, yeah. No, that was a, that was a legit knockout. Maybe I need to see it from another angle. I saw a crazy angle, honestly, from... Because I kept seeing the one where you see Tyron's back, but I saw Tyron facing. So I saw a lot... Paul's back this time in the fucking it was crazy like that was a legit knockout but it was a power punch he like went down like this and yeah popped. who would want to get punched I mean knocked out that hard on purpose I mean if they're gonna pay you a couple million dollars you wouldn't do it <laughs> but so basically the the theory is 
if you lose, we'll give you all this un- other money under the table. Yeah. So you have to like throw the fight. You know, some straight up uh, pride Japan days, you know, like, hey, you want to go ahead and make a couple more racks on top Take of that. Take a fall. Take a fall, man. Yeah, what's Tyron got to prove at this point? He was champion for years in the UFC. He was once, you know, the greatest. He's still great, but Damn. I don't know. Let us know in the Discord if you think that fight at Logan Paul, or was it Jake Paul? Jake Paul. Yeah, I don't know the difference between yeah. the motherfuckers. Uh, there was a lot of good fights. I know you missed most of them, but there's a, uh, this, this account I just randomly found has a lot of good kind of clips from the fight. Just random. I don't know these two individuals. Oof. Fuck. Right at the bell, too. Jesus Christ. That's the end of the fight right there? Yeah, that was the end of that fight. Well, that kid's emotional. What's his name? Yeah, I don't, I don't know who those fighters were. But yeah, uh, see them kind of shorts. I'm just gonna be walking around them kind of shorts all the time. I like Venom. Venom's an old school brand that finally like because you know Reebok was a brand that used used for years that were they had a deal. They had a huge deal that was a debacle. They didn't pay the fighters well. Like people called at the, for years that uh, Reebok was considered like the can- it was a cancer brand. They weren't doing very many things for the fighters pay wise. And then when I heard that Venom was gonna be the sponsor, I thought that was pretty cool because that brand's been around forever. So like I'm able to buy like um. Civilian grade venom. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna get on Origin. I don't know which um who else makes good rash guards? Um Yeah, that's a good question. I forgot all the brands. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, Origin. Mm-hmm. But uh but yeah, man. Anyway, that that, that was a great way to wrap the podcast. I know you didn't get to catch the fights, but if you can fa- find some highlights, uh, it was exciting. And then, unfortunately, that was the last event of the year, I believe. So the next fight isn't until early January. It might even be the Robert Whitaker out of signing fight here in Houston. They have, f- yeah, February 12th, yeah. Houston. Oh, that's February. Okay, mm-hmm. there's fights before February that. February 12th, Houston. Nice. That is a, that's a rematch in the making there. I might, can't wait for might, that. I hope Robert might. Whitaker can pull it off. Might have to get them tickets. Hello. They're probably going to be expensive, huh? Hey, crew. What up, crew, Bob? Crew, Bob. What it do? What it do, boy? I might want to, man, I might, might want to hit mitts with him soon. You know what I'm, okay. All right, so right now I'm in jujitsu. Yeah. You know what really sparks my curiosity? Wrestling. Yeah? Even though I'm 42. Wrestling sparks my curiosity. I mean, you'll learn a lot of, uh, of that in jujitsu, like a lot of takedown, you know, throws and defense. Except, like, in wrestling, it's less customary to, like, give up position and, like, Go to your back. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, there's none of that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I'm sure Jeff has a wrestling cl- class. Yeah, they do. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think it's on, I forget when it is. But uh, but anyway, I'm just sticking to my Tuesday nights for now. For now, and then you'll ease into it. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, shit, Muay Thai looks cool, boxing's always cool, yeah. all that shit's cool. No, I love all that stuff too. Especially when you're trying to be a sheepdog. <laughs> I hope to add that to the to the mix for sure next year. Yeah, and, and some pickleball. I got to get back on the pickleball courts, dude. You know Michael Berry's like all in on pickleball. No way. Yeah. He's gonna build a court at his house. No, oh, dude, I can't. That's you're gonna love that shit. Once you get on the court and play, we got to find some time maybe before you start touring again where you can come out to Stafford because the only real legit center is the badminton center, which is in Stafford, where they have pickleball courts too. Mm. Dude, that's the only legit one because I think they play at the Houston Met or something. Or I don't know where that's at. From here, I guess you can go to either one. For you, it's closer. I should say, for me, it's closer. Mm-hmm. Well, let's find a place, man. Find a place where we just find like an open uh, court, book it for an hour or two, and then let's go. Show. We have a badminton set in the back of our backyard, and Donna and I play badminton in the afternoons to get our cardio in. Dude, you, you play badminton? That's the little... The little birdie? Uh-huh. Our forearms are on fire. Like, we fucking were gripping jujitsu geese all day long just after like 60 minutes of playing badminton. Damn. And the Apple Watch has a badminton activity where you can set your activity for badminton. I'm, um, Mighty Soul's about to uh, hijack my watch because hers totally malfunctioned. Oh. Hers is out and mine, I don't ever wear it. All right, guys. So I'm about to go have breakfast. Yeah. Good shit. We'll see you on Christmas Eve. Absolutely. Tune in, tell a friend. Hopefully, y'all, you guys enjoyed it. We want to do a lot more podcasting next year. So, uh, hey, if you got a company and you want to uh, sponsor the podcast, um, I guess we'll have a meeting here where we formulate like reads versus sponsors versus presenter versus blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you very, very soon. Stay safe. Peace.